Oh boy, in an intense press briefing, reporters relentlessly questioned Corinne Jean-Pierre about President Biden's health, including this heated exchange. Watch this. Have to keep their privacy. It is public. It is public information. I, I, I hear you. I, 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 guys, 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 hold on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth and well, be in this aggressive a way. Missed around here about how information's been shared with the press. Every time I come back and I answer the question and that you, you guys asked. Correctly, you didn't have to come back and clean. I never answered answer the question incorrectly. That is not true. I was asked about a medical exam. I was asked about a physical. That was in the line of question that I answered. Mm, that briefing room battle comes as the New York Times reports a Parkinson's expert made at least eight trips to the White House in just the past eight months. Tommy Lahren is a host on Outkick.com and joins us now. Tommy, good morning to you. So one of the things I noticed about this press briefing yesterday was that Karine Jean-Pierre seemed very frustrated with the questions that she was getting asked when it is her responsibility to answer them. And doesn't she think that the American people are equally frustrated, if not more, than her lack of responses? This is just wholly unacceptable. I've got to say, I do feel a little bit badly for our press secretary. I certainly wouldn't want that job. I can't think of anyone at this point who would want to work for this administration and have to answer for the disaster that's unfolding before our very eyes. So I will say that I do feel badly for her this week and every week moving forward. But the American people and the press corps have every right to be asking these questions. I would just ask the other members of the press corps beyond our own Peter Ducey and a couple of others, where have you been for the last three and a half years? This is not new. You should have been asking these questions three and a half years ago. This should have been a steady stream of questions every time Joe Biden had a major gaffe or a failing moment or wandered off into the abyss. You should have been asking these questions, but it's been covered up and they've been complicit in the cover up, or at least they haven't had the journalistic curiosity to ask the questions for several years years at this point. So I understand that they're frustrated, but a lot of us are frustrated that they're just now beginning to be frustrated. So I guess there's a lot of circular frustration, and it all leads back to the Biden White House and what may, may be the greatest political cover-up of our lifetime. Yeah, we still need an answer as to exactly what the heck is going on here. Here's part of the letter from the White House doctor. It says Dr. Kennard, writing about him, has held regular neurology clinics at the White House Medical clinic in support of the thousands of active duty members assigned in support of the White House operation. But Tommy, as former White House physician and current Congressman Ronnie Jackson stated on Ingram last night, we played the clip earlier, then why would this specialist see thousands upon thousands of military patients in the clinic directly below the Biden bedroom? Something just doesn't add up. Your thoughts? Yeah, last time I checked, they weren't running some kind of a military hospital uh, outside of the White House or underneath the White House. Um, very interesting explanation there. But we just heard from President Joe Biden last week in that disastrous ABC interview that he doesn't need to take a cognitive test because they told him he doesn't need to. So if you've got a specialist going in, he's either taken a cognitive test and they don't want to reveal the results, or his doctors are, exp are actually a, a huge dereliction of duty if they aren't giving him him a cognitive test, and it, yet they're going to see him. So none of this is adding up. The math is not mathing, as the Gen Zers would say, <laughs> but we need some real answers. And I have a feeling now that the press has this blood in the water, finally, they're not going to let this one go. This is going to be a rough week for Team Biden. Yeah, it certainly will be. And if this Parkinson's expert was at the White House eight times over the past eight months to hold medical clinics, you would think that Karine Jean-Pierre would know ahead of the press briefing, because that was the biggest story of the day. She was obviously going to get questions on it, which she did. But she wasn't the only uh, person to receive some heated questions from the media yesterday. Uh, listen to this exchange uh, with uh, First Lady Jill Biden. She was in uh, North Carolina yesterday. Watch this. Do you have any message to House Democrats who are calling for your husband to drop out of the race? How are you feeling about the state of the race? All right, ladies. And also, Tommy, the Washington Post published a series of letters from readers, diehard Biden supporters, all of them. They said addressing the first lady, urging her to convince her husband to drop out. So where does she fit in all of this? 
Listen, we've talked about this for quite some time now, but I don't think Joe Biden is anything short of an elder abuser at this point. You know, Joe Biden and people that are in that cognitive state, if he is indeed in a declining cognitive state, which seemingly that is so, they're the last to know and they're the last to let go. And they're the last to really understand the position that they are in. But the people around them know it well. And anybody who's had a grandparent or a parent that suffered from cognitive decline, they understand the signs. They understand that their loved one certainly doesn't want to let go, that they will white knuckle anything that they have, especially if you're the president of the United States. So the fact that she's sitting back and not only not encouraging him to drop out, but seemingly being the one that's keeping him in or encouraging him to stay in, to me, that's nothing short of elder abuse. And it just shows how much she loves the limelight and she loves the lifestyle. She doesn't care about her husband. She certainly doesn't care about this country. Tommy Lahren laying it out for us on a Tuesday. Tommy, Tommy, Tuesday. Thank you so much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.